week's U3. Uh, we're in my house again, but we're going to do things a bit differently because I have some guests with me who I will introduce you to in a minute. It's great to have you with us. We're going to have a lot of fun doing all the usual things and looking at another parable Jesus told. So before we really get started, I'm going to pray for us. Heavenly Father, thank you again for this opportunity to meet uh, via video. Pray that you'll uh, help us today as we look at another parable that Jesus told. And I pray that you'll uh, help us to just generally have a good time learning more about you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so, so I have got some guests with me. I've got um, Rowan Atkinson, or Mr Bean, you may know him better as. And uh, moving on, we have um, Cheryl Cole, who's sitting here. And we have um, Simon Cowell, he turned up as well. And then we have um, Barack Obama, he turned up. Uh, yeah, it's great. And we have Judy Dench. Um, and last but not least, we have James Bond, otherwise known as Daniel Craig. It's great to have them all with us. So I invited them all, and they turned up. Well, actually, as you probably noticed, they didn't. We'll find out more about that later, but I wonder if any of those people that are with me are people you'd actually like to know. Well, we've been looking at a few people we should know over the recent weeks, haven't we? Um, and we've got another one now in our series, People You Should Know. I found them really interesting. So listen up and see who we find out about this week as Amy reads it to us. William Carey, 1761 to 1834. Have you ever been to a different country on holiday? Which country was it? How did you get there? Nowadays, it's easy to visit different countries. When William Carey was alive, it was not easy at all. There were no buses or trains, cars or planes. Most people only travelled a few miles in their whole lives. William was a shoemaker. He lived in a little English town. He had a wife and children. He had never travelled anywhere. But William knew that people the other side of the world needed to know about his friend Jesus, and no one else seemed to care. So William the shoemaker left his little town with his wife and children and travelled to India, on the other side of the world. To tell people in India about his friend Jesus, he needed to learn their language, so he did. He needed to put the Bible in words they understood, so he did. He needed to print new Bibles, so he did. He did whatever he could to show the people in India that they could be Jesus' friend too. It was hard. It was hard for him, it was hard for his wife and children, but he did it. Little by little, other people went to other countries to tell them about Jesus too. All because the shoemaker William did it first. I really have enjoyed finding out about these people we should know week by week. Some of them I knew nothing about, and it's been really, really interesting. Now, of course, these people who I've invited aren't actually here. They're not actually with me. But I'll tell you, they had pathetic excuses, well, I thought so, for not coming along. I mean, firstly, take Simon Cowell. He said he was working on some new TV show, some competition that would make him millions. Don't know what that was about. And then there was... Daniel Craig and Judy Dench, they said something about filming or practicing for play or something. They can't be doing that, can they, in these times? And then there was Barack Obama, said something about couldn't get a flight or something from America. Actually thinking about it, that one might actually be true. But, frankly, I don't believe the others. Talking about believing people, did you believe Pete last week? He did the truth or lie. But was it a truth or was it a lie? What did you think and did he get a custard pie? Let's find out now. Daddy, it's naughty to lie! <laughs> Thank 
Well, that was good, wasn't it? Pete getting a custard pie. I just couldn't resist showing it more than once and in slow motion. It was brilliant. I hope you didn't miss it. And talking of missing things, what's missing? Our regular feature where you write down the answer and if you've got them all, I promise, as I have each week, I will give you a mega prize. So here we go. Here's the picture for this week. But what's missing? Now, it's almost time for our reading from the Bible, another parable that Jesus told we're going to hear today. Um, but first, of course, I have to show you a picture. And this is the other competition that we do. So don't forget, you need to work out what the picture is, because it won't be taken from a usual angle or perspective. And then you have to work out what the picture has to do with today's parable told by Jesus. Here's the picture. I hope you managed to work out what that was. Don't forget, keep a record of all your answers. But now you need to work out what it had to do with the parable. I said earlier that all my guests, well, kind of guests, had excuses for not being able to come and join me today. But wait till you hear the excuses in the parable that Jesus told. Unbelievable. Here's Lucy to read it for us. Luke chapter 14 verses 15 to 24 the parable of the great banquet when one of those at the table with him heard this he said to jesus blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of god jesus replied a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests at the time of the banquet he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited. Come now, for everything is ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I have just got married so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, Go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in. Not one of those who were invited will taste a, uh, will get a taste of my banquet. So we're going to have a look at that reading from the Bible together. So as we start, I'll pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for all these parables that Jesus told that we have written down for us in the Bible. Help us now as we look at this parable to understand it and to take notice of the warnings and the encouragement that it contains. In Jesus' name. Amen. So to start with, I have a, a little question for you to think about uh, as we look at this parable. And the question is, what is the best party you've ever been to? What is the best party you've ever been to? Have a think about that and maybe why it was so good. Well, here I am, surrounded by my guests, having a little party. But I must say, you know, they're not very talkative. The conversation hasn't really got going at all. And it was a bit like that in the part of Luke that we read earlier from the Bible. Jesus was a guest at the home of a religious man, a Pharisee. 
And if you read the verses that come before the ones we read, you'll discover that, well, things were a bit awkward. People were kind of sitting there, not sure what to say. At least it seems everyone was feeling a bit awkward, except Jesus. He'd been asking the others a question or two, and they had no answers. Or at least they didn't want to answer because he would make them either look stupid or bad, or maybe just both. They didn't even have the excuse of being cardboard cutouts, like some people. So then Jesus challenged them about who they asked to their parties, to their banquets. And they really only ever asked people who could invite them back. But Jesus said they should invite others who couldn't do that, who couldn't repay them. No doubt that led to another awkward silence. Until one person who's there shouts out, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. It would have been a bit like here now when it goes quiet and Rowan Atkinson or Mr Bean shouts out something totally irrelevant. Did anyone bring the picnic hamper? Well, maybe not that bad. But I mean, I suppose at least what the man said to Jesus was true. Anyone at the feast in the kingdom of God is certainly going to be blessed or happy, aren't they? But I guess the guy who said that to Jesus assumed that he and the other people who were with him would be at that banquet in God's kingdom. After all, they were God's people and they were the religious leaders. So of course they'd be at the banquet, they'd be thinking. Now Jesus wasn't one for letting an opportunity pass. And so he tells them a story. He tells them a parable. And as usual with Jesus, the parable is a bit like a stealth bomber. It just sneaks up on you, creeps up, and then it lets fly, shocking you out of your comfort zone. So we have the parable. A man organises a party. He gets on with preparing everything and he sends out the invitations. Maybe a bit like this. He sends them out, just like I did to these guys. Now what would have happened back then is the people would have got the invitation and they would have replied. And they must have replied saying they would come. So, when everything is then ready, you know, the soup's almost hot, the meat's in the oven, the pudding is cooling nicely in the fridge, the man sends word to the guests that they should come. It's like grabbing your phone and ringing people up on the day of the party, just to remind them, it's today, make sure you're coming. But they don't come. They give excuses. Now, just a little break. What is the best excuse you've ever come up with, or perhaps you've ever heard, for not doing your homework? What's the best excuse or the best you've ever heard for not doing your homework? Why don't you have a little think about that, just for a couple of seconds, then I might give you a few that I've found or heard about. What about these excuses? We got a new paper shredder and had to see if it was working. Or, I made it into a paper aeroplane, but it got hijacked. Or, I was doing my homework on the beach, but the tide came in and it got wet. Or, I thought I'd do it tomorrow because I'd be older and therefore be wiser. Or, I couldn't do it because I was at a rally for higher teacher pay. So these people give excuses for not coming to the party. I wonder if you've ever had something like that happen to you. You arrange a party or a meal and everyone says they're coming. And so you get everything from the shops, you tidy up, you cook, you prepare everything, it's all ready. And then the phone goes. <coughs> Sorry. You can't come, the grass needs mowing. 
the grass needs mowing. And then he goes again, uh, sorry, I can't come. Uh, I've just washed my hair. And then, sorry, you can't come. There's a really good film on. What feeble, pathetic excuses. Almost as bad as these guys. What they're really saying is, they can't be bothered. They've got better things to do than spend time with you and go to your party. And just like in the parable Jesus told, those are the excuses that are just feeble. I have to go and look at a field. I've just bought it. What, you didn't look at it before? I've got to go and try out my new oxen. Why, are they going to get bored if you don't do it right now and leave it till tomorrow? I just got married. What, and you didn't know that was happening when you accepted the invitation in the first place? Just bring your wife. They're pathetic excuses. They couldn't be bothered. They had better things to do. How did the man feel? Well, how did you feel when it happened to you? Or if it did happen to you, how do you think you would feel? It's not good, is it, to put it mildly? But remember, this is a parable told by Jesus. And this story has a much more serious meaning. You see, the man, the one who prepares the banquet, the party, he represents God. And God prepares a feast in his kingdom and he invites people to come. And then when everything is ready, the timetable kicks forward, the kingdom is now here. He sends his servant. He sends Jesus with the message for those invited. Come, come now to the party. It's ready. The time has come, accept the invitation and come to the banquet in my kingdom. How will people respond? to God's generous invitation, what will they say? Oh yeah, of course, I'll be there. The reminder's on the fridge, never gonna forget about that. Wouldn't miss it for anything. Oh, I'm all ready, I'll be right with you. No, not at all. Jesus says in verse 18, they all began to make excuses. A field to see, oxen to try, a wife to look after. God sends invitations to the banquet in his kingdom, but people don't want to know. They can't be bothered. They have better things to do. I've got to sort out my career. I've got to get on with my education. I've got these other things that are more important. My girlfriend, my boyfriend, whatever it is. So what will God do? He looks down from heaven. He's made everything ready. Admission to this great party is free. It's been bought at the cost of the death of his son. So will God be dishonoured? Will his invites be ignored? Did Jesus die for nothing? What will God do? Well, what does the man in the story do? He tells the servant to invite other people. Not the people these religious leaders would have expected, not the people they would have had to their party, oh no. He goes to the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. These were the outcasts, the people others looked down on. The people they would never invite to anything and certainly didn't think would be invited to God's kingdom banquet. But they are. They are invited and they come. But the party still isn't full, so what does the man do next? Well, he sends the servant out again. And he brings in people who never ever thought they'd get invited. The man will have a full party. And God too will have a full party. Loads of people will be at his banquet in his kingdom. But those who thought they were in weren't. They rejected the invitation. They rejected the one who brought it to them. And those who thought there was no way they would ever be invited, no way they could be in God's kingdom, they find they are invited. And all they have to do is accept the invitation. So where does that leave us? Where does that leave you and me? Well, there is a warning here. A big warning. Some people who thought they were in will be out. 
Some who thought they would be in God's kingdom, they won't be. Oh, they might say the right things and they might give the right answers to questions or they might go to the right places, but they've never really accepted the invitation. They're still living the same way as they always have. They still think there are better things to do than be with Jesus. They love this world more than him. And that's a warning. But there's also the invitation. And that's an encouragement, isn't it? You know, perhaps we think, God would never be interested in me. I've never really done anything. I've never really had any time for him. I just do what I wanted. I pushed him in a corner. Well, he has an invite for you. Perhaps we think we could never be good enough for God. We aren't fit to be at his party, at his banquet. <laughs> and you know that's true, we aren't. But we're invited anyway. Because Jesus has taken care of things. In his love and mercy, he's paid the price for us to go to the party in God's kingdom. God's party will be full. The question is, will you be there? Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you give our invitations to your kingdom banquet, to the party in your kingdom. We thank you. You invite all kinds of people, everyone, to be part of your kingdom party. Thank you that you invite us. Thank you because of Jesus dying on the cross for us and paying the price for our sin. We can be forgiven and have a place in your kingdom party. Help us to accept the invitation you give us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, that's it for this week, this week's edition of Youthy. Thank you for joining us again. Uh, so it's goodbye from me and goodbye from all my guests this week. I'll see if they can come up with any better excuses for not being with me next week. Bye for now. Stay safe.